What's up, y'all? It is your girl, Chanel from Complex Simplicity. Happy February 12th. <laughs> um, I cannot believe we're already halfway, damn near halfway into the second month of 2019. Um, yes, it's about time for me to do a updated vlog. I am so busy lately um, between my day job and my two brands I'm building, which is, of course, Complex Simplicity and Move With Finesse. Um, and uh, family life and all of that jazz, it's a lot going on. So I strive and I have gold myself, <laughs> if that makes sense, to vlog twice a month. Um, and if I can do more, to do more, but for me to at least vlog twice a month, so it's about that time. Um, I feel like I have quite a few thoughts that I would like to share. First things first, I hope all is well with you all out there. Um, I know that there are a lot of people going through it already in the new year. Um, I know there are even family members of mine who are going through it, friends of mine who are going through it. Um, hell, I go through little things here and there as well. Um, but we're still here. We're still alive. We have air in our lungs. We're making it, you know, um, and that's what we got to do. Forge forward and, and pray God's strength. I pray God's strength for all of you out there. Um, just as a reminder, I'll go through a few housekeeping things before we jump right on in to what I want to talk about today. Um, just so you know, I posted on my Instagram page at complexedsimplicity09. Just a reminder, back in July, I um, came out with my first ever visual book entitled How I Remain Emotionally Balanced in a Dysfunctional World, and it is still available, y'all. It's $4.99. Um, a huge part of my brand, a huge part of my message is emotional balance and the importance of us striving to be emotionally balanced because it affects the choices we make for our lives. It affects how we deal with people and interact on a day-to-day -day basis. It affects a whole myriad of things, and that's kind of the foundation and premise almost of complex simplicity. So every now and then I probably don't advertise it as much as I should, um, but it is still available. Check it out. It's really me telling my story um, or a major part or a large part of my story because of course my story is continuing to be written. But um, my story as far as me being, I think I wrote it up to the point of being 34 years old. I'm 35 now. Um, just things that I've learned in my childhood, things that I've learned from my family, my parents, things that I've learned um, from my peers and just with society kind of has put out there and I discuss in this chaotic, crazy, dysfunctional, evil, crazy world <laughs> that does have some ray of sunshine at times and some light being, sh you know, shined through, so to speak, how I'm able to kind of combat that and keep my sanity and keep my emotional health balanced, my mental health balanced. Um, it's very laid back. That's kind of who I am and my style. Um, it, it's funny. It's entertaining. Um, I think it'll be enjoyable. I'm not just saying that because I created it, but um, I think it's a pretty cool and dope experience and another way for me to reach out to you people out there, um, to you the people, um, and continue to uh, disseminate my mess disseminate sorry my message um so it's out there the link is in my bio complex simplicity at complex simplicity if you go to my website complexed simplicity.com um there is a separate tab that is visual book it's still available check it out and just my last housekeeping thing move with finesse we have another class coming up we're gonna be getting our sexy Yes, Dance On. Um, it's on the 23rd of February, which is next Saturday from 8 to 9.30 p.m. at Dancer Dreams Studio, um, located at 1630 Westchester Avenue, Bronx, New York, 10472. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to bring a friend, and let's get down and, and experience the power of, of us women, um, power of us people. Um, let's network. Let's build each other up let's empower each other through dance and, and and among other things right um so far it's been 
um, Denise and I, it's been us just doing it since November and we've had a few classes. We've gotten some pretty cool opportunities so far and we're happy. We're continuing to grind, to build, um, to get it to the potential we know that it can be at. Um, it's so crazy how even, because you know I'm human of course, when I have my moments where I may feel slightly defeated or I really legit may feel defeated in building complex simplicity, in building Move of Finesse, even though Move of Finesse is very new, um, sometimes, you know, it, it, it can be a little discouraging when, you know, the very people um, that you support all the time don't support your cause or um, just in general people I don't know, you know, um, just it not me not getting the numbers, so to speak, that in my mind I want to have. But then I have to remind myself when I'm feeling defeated or I'm feeling discouraged or even if I'm feeling a little insecure, um, just to remember why I started these brands. Remember why um, this, is, this was a burning desire to just remember the purpose and what my purpose is and that the rest of all the nuances and the numbers and the revenue and the platform, all that stuff will come, it will come, just keep building and plugging away. And I was having kind of one of those feelings maybe a week or two ago my childhood best friend, shout outs to you, Serena. We call her Raina. Um, she, you know, sent a message. I think I've said this before. I'm on a group chat with a lot of my girlfriends, um, my childhood friends, and even one of my college friends is a part of this chat. And I love this chat because we're so busy. Some of us are mothers, wives, both, um, neither, whatever. Life is busy for all of us and you know, we all go through things and experience life's challenges and, and of course life's amazing moments and we're able to stay connected through that and I feel like it's way more personal than social media, right? Because this is a, it's a chat group on WhatsApp, of course, just with us women. Um, it's about, it's about four or five of us on this chat group. And you know, it's amazing how someone will send an encouraging word or a message or something funny, or you know, we just touch base and say happy Friday, have a good day, good morning, you know what I'm saying, happy Monday. And um, through this chat, my childhood best friend, Serena, was just so encouraging and just um, pouring into Denise and I and saying that so much is gonna happen with this and she's so proud of us and to keep doing what we're doing. and. Something as simple as those words, when you're feeling a bit defeated or you're feeling a bit discouraged, oh my goodness, it meant the world. And sometimes we need those reminders from our very own loved ones and sometimes even from strangers or people who we don't know that well or who don't know us well to say those things. I always believe that God will send messages sometimes through expected people and a lot of times through unexpected people. And so it was so encouraging to get that uh, message um, and even Denise, my, my, my co, my, my rider, my co choreographer, um, my partner in crime with Move with Finesse, you know, she's always like, we, don't worry, it's going to be good. We got this. Like we're always that for one another. Um, so that's always a great thing, but to have people outside of us pouring into us and just speaking positivity and love and amazing things about what we're doing is so uber encouraging. So Shout outs to you, Raina, and everyone else out there. You know who you are. Lorena, um, one of my other best friends, she has been probably the friend to attend the most classes. Nia, who I know through Denise, has been there. She's actually part of our team, um, helping us to film and do other things. And, and so thank you, ladies. You are so dope and amazing for that. Um, and, you know, I believe that what... I'm building with my friend Denise is going to be something great and um, it's going to more importantly than that when I say something great not for the look of it the accolades and all of that jazz and just the money I think what we're gonna be the foundation we're gonna be able to build the environment that we always have the message that we have I think is going to be very helpful encouraging um, loving positive and empowering to other people out there who join in to share the move with finesse experience with us. And I just say that to encourage you out there because we all have these discouraging moments with whatever goals, whatever brands, whatever jobs, whatever it is in life that we are trying to build and do and achieve. Um, there are times where you will feel a bit defeated and you will feel a bit discouraged. Um, I'm so thankful that 
God designed me with the kind of spirit where I'm a fighter. So even when I have those moments of feeling discouraged or defeated, it only lasts for just that, a moment. And then I'm back at it, never giving up, let's do this. And so, um, you know, um, I just wanna put that out there that we do have a class coming up on the 23rd, next Saturday. It's gonna be so dope. Of course, being how Valentine's Day is a few days away, February, is kind of like the month that everybody recognizes love even though we know love is something we should be showing on a day-to-day -day basis and it doesn't just have to be in a romantic way um but in the the wake of it being valentine's day month we thought that it would be pretty dope to have a class that's a little more sexy you know um and even if it's not for you to do a dance for a significant other just within yourself. I feel so sexy when I dance. I feel so free <laughs> when I'm dancing and doing um, my thing. I was just upstairs, you know, um, practicing and not really just practicing, but choreographing my part to the song we're gonna do next Saturday. And I came up with something that I love and it meshes well with what my girl niece has already done. Um, and so we'll put both parts together. But I felt so free, I feel so sexy when I'm just dancing and just letting the music dictate the movement, you know? Um, which is what I love about creating. Even when I do these vlogs, I don't rehearse these things. I'm not like writing out what I'm gonna say. I just let the moment dictate for me what it is that I'm going to say. There are of course things or topics I have or things I might have experienced with others or when watching crazy reality TV or when watching a sitcom or when having a conversation with a colleague or whatever that will inspire what I talk about. But I still just go straight from the dome and just just let myself be free. A lot of times that's when my best vlogs come. Um, that's when, when I'm choreographing, that's when my best uh, work comes through. Um, when you're just letting it be natural and flow and allowing yourself to be free. So I was upstairs for about an hour allowing myself to just let the music allow me to be free and came up with something that I think was going to be dope in conjunction with what my girl niece already came up with and we're ready. So let's get our dance on, our sexy dance on next Saturday. Can't wait to experience and dance with you. $15, um, but it's a good time. So just wanted to take care of those few housekeeping things and to encourage you when you have those feelings of just being a little discouraged down and out, not really... Um, uh, or feeling lethargic, so to speak, like keep pushing, keep going. Allow yourself to feel that. When I had my moment of feeling discouraged with building both of these brands, I allow myself to feel it. But then it's like, all right, so we process that. Let's get back to work. <laughs> so we're back to work. And thank God for, like I said, the amazing people that I do have in my life. When you least expect it, they'll, God will show them or urge them or put it on their hearts to encourage and build you up. So let's be that for one another. Um, so what is it that I want to talk about today? If you see me looking down, I'm just referring to uh, my lovely iPad. <laughs> Um, because a lot of what I probably want to talk about um, is inspired by a lot of the thought-provoking or encouraging um, posts that I put up on our, my Instagram page. So what I recently put up was um, something I saw and it says, you got to know the difference between support and surveillance. You got to know the difference between support and surveillance. And... I so, 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 so agree with this thought <laughs> um, because I experience it all the time and I'm sure many of you do as well. And I've learned through a lot of my own life experiences with dealing with this kind of thing with people that I know and care about and love and vice versa that you got to really be able to decipher when people are really riding out with you and they're wishing you well and they're supporting you and support doesn't always mean about a venture that you're doing support could very well mean emotionally supporting you going through things like i said life is difficult for all of us when you're going through things you're having a rough couple of weeks a rough couple of days you know being able to have those people that person you can ventilate to and and receive some level of encouragement or just empathy or a listening ear someone to be like you know what girl I feel you 
I go, I'm going through the same thing or I've been there. This is how I got out. This is what's helped me through certain things. Like it's important to have that. And then of course, for the different things that we're doing, whether it's celebratory moments, whether it's ventures, entrepreneurial things, whatever it is, it's also very important to be able to have the people in your life, your loved ones, um, your tribe, so to speak, to be there to support you. Now, I think social media, or not I think, I know social media has got us all effed up, meaning we, we all got it twisted in the sense of just because numerically we may have this many or number followers, don't get it twisted. Most of those people are just surveilling, meaning they're just watching. They're just looking to see what's going on with you to be nosy or to know if they're, if, if they're doing better or maybe it's like, oh damn, this person is doing all these things. I feel some kind of way. I feel inadequate. I feel jealous. A lot of what I think most of us experience these days, especially with the way the world is set up with social media, is the comparisons or just this constant habit of wanting and needing, for whatever reasons, to know what's going on with everyone, with their job, their career, their family, their boyfriend, their girlfriend, their husband, their wife, their kids. They're, you know, like what we, I don't know why it's like this insane need to know. And I dare any one of you to be like, no, that's not true because we're, most of us are on social media scrolling away. Like I'm, I too scrolling away. I, predominantly I'm on to promote whatever it is I'm doing or to market whatever it is I'm building. But if I'm keeping it real, I'm also scrolling and seeing what's going on with the celebrities, scrolling and seeing what's going on with people that I know. And um, a lot of times I think that we can get it misconstrued in thinking or feeling that we're gonna have all these supporters and it's not true. Like social media doesn't reflect real life. The people that I talk to on the regular are a, a, a small number, a tiny number compared to whoever is following me on social media or who I'm following. And I naturally have a small following for everything, for my personal pages and even for my brands, which is where I get discouraged at times if I'm being honest when it comes to my brands of like, damn, why is it so hard to like build my tribe where it reflects on social media? Like I always say, my stats that I check every day on my website are pretty good numbers but I don't get why on my social media it's like it doesn't reflect the amount of traffic I get on my website right and some would say Chanel who cares because they're going straight to your site so you're good but to be honest social media is free marketing so if I want to market my visual book or if I'm trying to market a move with finesse dance class and the following on social media is incy weensy teeny weeny then it kind of makes it difficult when you're trying to build your empire so to speak um and so when i say i have moments of feeling defeated and discouraged it's more so with those things like trying to figure out what and how i can build my brand to the point where it's known and people are aware of what it is and where that can also offer other awesome opportunities, right? But in the meantime, I'm still creating them for myself. I'm still building, I'm still plugging away. And I know for both Complex Simplicity and Move of Finesse, they're gonna have their day where amazing opportunities are presented. Um, but yes, getting back, I went off a little bit of a tangent, but getting back to the matter of at hand, as far as, um, you know, us getting it kind of misconstrued with, thinking, because I, I know people who have thousands of followers, right? But when I go out and support them, where are these people? So it just goes to show, you know, that that don't mean nothing, y'all. Um, so it's important for us to know the difference of who is genuinely riding out for us, praying for us, wishing the best for us, supporting us, whether that is spending their good coin, whether that is just for moral support, whatever, versus people who are just watching. They're just watching to see, to be nosy, or just to, 
when you do get to a point where they feel like, oh, you're on to something, then you'll have those people who want to align themselves with you, which I do not respect at all. If you didn't rock out with me when I was building, don't try to rock out with me when all the fruits of my labor and hard work and the blessings God is giving to me are now in, in everyone's face. Please leave me alone at that point, you know? Um, and so, you know, that kind that uh, post really like caught my attention and I had to, I had to, you know, put it up and, and kind of express my, my thoughts about that one. Um, so yes, let's just, you know, be aware. Let's be aware, y'all. Know the people who truly ride out with you. And a lot of times I find, which annoys me, because I even see people that I know and love do it at times, like respecting, only respecting things when it gets, when it has a certain look or only respecting people's entrepreneurial ventures, whether that is music or that is dancing or that is um, any other level of arts out here, or musicianship or uh, acting or um, just normal business ventures, opening a restaurant or whatever, only respecting things when they have a look and then wanting to support it contribute your dollar to it, align yourself with it. Like, I don't respect that. I, I always have like the, the perspective of, if I believe in you, what you're doing, I believe in what you're doing. If I think what you're doing is dope, I think what you're doing is dope. Whether the world knows who you are or no one knows who you are. You know, um, a lot of times to me, it's, it's, I like to bet on the underdog, you know, um, because you never know what that can turn into. And like I always use Cardi B as an example and shout out to her for getting her Grammy. The industry damn near laughed at this girl years ago, two years ago when she was really on her grind and her hustle. She was putting out music, it was rough. She was still getting acclimated and finding her sound. People were like laughing at her. DJs were not spinning her music. People were not really giving her opportunities. Very few people, like the Breakfast Club members, the, the hosts, I should say, Charlemagne and Yee and um, Envy or other people on different platforms here and there would like give her a chance because they saw her star power. They saw that there was a diamond in the rough somewhere with Cardi, right? And now just to even see how she's killing the game, you know, is a great example that I like to use. She was, she was and still isn't, well, she's no longer an underdog, but she was an underdog for a while. Had, didn't really get much respect. Like I said, people were laughing at her and not trying to give her any opportunities out here and look at her now. So this is why I naturally don't only praise people whose faces have made it on TV or praise people you know, who seem to be doing things with brands or who seem to have a look. And don't get me wrong, I'm happy for people that I know who are doing those great and bomb things. But that's not gonna make me wanna align myself with you and work with you or, or buy into whatever it is that you're doing. Um, what makes me wanna support and do those things aside from you being in my inner circle um, is even if you're a stranger, is if there's something that you're doing that resonates with me and I believe it, right? Um, and so I would also just say, let us all, including me, I'm always a part of the conversation, just be careful with only wanting to respect or repost or physically support or morally support or align ourselves with people who we think have a look with what they're doing. I think that is super whack. Um, let's just like, if you believe in something, go hard with it. And I already can see now, I feel like I can see the day when complex simplicity and or move with finesse gets to a certain point where we've worked our way, where for whatever reasons we may have a look, then for some reason I, I, I see it strongly, people coming out the woodworks wanting to align themselves. And my very words are gonna be, whether you're a friend and a, a, I don't really have foes, whether you're a friend or someone I don't rock with anymore or someone I don't know or whatever, my thing is gonna be, well, where were you when I was building and grinding or when we were building and grinding for all these years? You know what I'm saying? Um, so be careful with that, y'all. A lot of times the underdogs be the ones you wanna bet on. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times when you're an underdog, you take risks. You're, you jump off cliffs, as I always say, like you have nothing to lose, right? And so people who go hard and like, work and grind, which is another thing that I always respect in Riccardi. Her work ethic is crazy. I always say this, talent will get you but so far. I think with her, it's her personality. That's like her super power, so to speak. She has a level of talent when it comes to rapping, 
but it's more of her work ethic and her personality that has gotten her to the place and point where she is. I'm not saying she's not talented, but let's keep it real when it comes to the rapping game, she still has room to grow as most of us do. All of us do, right? In whatever um, our talents are. Um, but I think what has pushed her to the pinnacle of her success at this point is a, her personality, which is what hooked us all from the beginning, or most of us, and B, her work ethic is insane. And I'm a hard worker, worker B, that's who I, part of who I am. And I know for sure, like with my day job, you know, continuing to do very well, praise be to Jesus, because of my work ethic, strategic thinking, um, you know, figuring out how to maneuver in companies and businesses and learn what I need to learn at a fast rate and, you know, um, making it clear that I'm loyal and I'm ready to get the job done to the best of my ability, willing to learn, I'm ready to learn, you know. Um, that work ethic is important. I think even with what has been keeping complex simplicity alive is my work ethic. There's nobody over my shoulder telling me to vlog and telling me to, to do certain things and work on projects. Like, it's me who is the one that's like, Okay, Chanel, we gotta get up, we gotta get ready, you gotta you gotta do a vlog today, we gotta do this, you gotta put stuff up on your social media, you gotta, like, it's the grind, the grind, the, the work ethic is very important. That'll actually, I feel like, get a lot of people far. It's really not just the talent. Um, like at Beyonce, she's super talented, but she has a crazy, insane work ethic. Like, that work ethic is so needed. Um, and so that's why I'm willing to bet on anybody who's willing to work hard. You know what I'm saying? You're willing to work hard and you're willing to take risks. I'm with you. You know, at some point you will get to that point. I was going to say you will win, but I don't really, I find, I don't really like that term anymore, winning and what it represents. I feel like winning means that there are people out here who are just absolutely losing. And I don't know if I agree with that. That premise, you know, I feel like um, everybody has a season in their lives or points where we're doing well, right? We're receiving God's blessings. And then I believe that we all will have seasons where we go through the valleys and the low, hard times and the challenging times to prepare us for whatever that greater purpose or that greater thing is. So that's why I really don't always like to use the term like winning. I see a lot of people use that term, oh, this person's winning or I'm winning. It's like, uh. then to me, that, that establishes that there's some level of competitiveness or competition of life going on, which we're all aware of, but I try my best not to be um, competitive to the point of you really trying to like take people out to win. I don't know. It's hard for me to kind of articulate what I'm thinking, but <laughs> don't get me wrong. I'm all about, you know, sometimes a, a, a little dose of competitiveness is important and I can go overboard with it, which is probably why I try to keep myself at bay. And it more so comes out in my workplace where, um, in my mind, I'm like going hard, I'm going hard, I'm going hard because I want to be able to, um, show that I am like the strongest candidate right but at the same time I always have to like put myself in check and ground myself in that area because it can it can it can be a not so good thing to be like super competitive in my opinion um so that's probably why I try not to like subscribe to that whole winning thing it's just we all have our moments in life it's are we willing to a work hard and b be okay if God puts us on the bench and it's like, it's not your turn yet. You got to sit down and, and, and support your team. It's not your turn, you know? Um, and I'm finding that, you know, that's something that I'm also really working with myself on. I'm a team player, don't get me wrong, but like in competitive job, jobs, companies, positions, things of that nature, still reminding myself that we will always win more as a team and to be cool with being on the bench cheering on my fellow teammates because it's not going to always be my time. It's not going to always be my turn right now. Like sometimes you got to cool out, chill out and, and sit back and clap for everybody else. Um, and so, uh, just putting that out there, but anyway, 
It's not all about us winning all the time, which infers that there are people out here losing. Like, I, I don't know how I feel about that. I don't really like that much. Um, but more so just when it's your turn, it's your turn. And when it's not your turn, sit your ass down and clap wholeheartedly and cheer the other people on whose turn it is. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I have no qualms with saying that there are times, um, more so in my professional life where I have to like really get that in check. Um, I don't, you know, I'm not somebody that will sabotage anybody or do anything like that. I'm, I'm the type where people are like, you're just a little bit too honest in this field. Um, cause I'm the type where if I know that I didn't sell that handbag, I'm not taking nobody's sale. Like if I know that this is not my client, I'm not hoodwinking, hoodwinking and cutting off somebody's throat to work with their client to get a sale. Like we don't work off commission. We get paychecks like everybody else. Pretty decent paychecks at that. No reason to be shitty in that way. You know what I'm saying? Um, but just more so like with being top seller and like my competitive, my quiet competitiveness comes out in that area at times that I have to quiet. Um, it's like, yes, Chanel, work hard, keep your work ethic, be strategic, do what you got to do to make your goals and make team goals. But at the same time, it's all right. Not every day is going to be that amazing selling day where you shine. It's okay. It'll be someone else's turn. And at the end of the day, all of our wins helps what? The team. Because when we make our goals as a what? Team, we get what? More money. <laughs> so I'm kind of glad that I'm going through this kind of reinforced um, moment at my job where it's like, no chick, relax. Like, and like I said, for me, it's a quiet thing. I don't, it's not an energy that I'm giving off or purposely giving off or anything like that. I'm just like quietly trying to kill the game, which I should be, but at the same time, not just being so focused on my goals and my individual performance, also being just as focused on our team goals because that's where we win. And I'll always respect my company for putting that, uh, not putting that out there, but like for building our company in a way that really you win financially when as a team, if we're gonna use the term win, you win financially when as a team we're making it and doing it, right? Um, don't focus just individually. And maybe also being in a social work field, you know, it was team oriented, but in a different way. Your cases, whether I was working with kids or foster parents, it was on me. If I did what I was supposed to do, it was great, you know? If I didn't do what I was supposed to do, then I had to deal with whatever came with that, right? So I'm used to being in an environment where I'm solely responsible for my work. Whereas now I'm in an environment where, yes, I do have to do what I need to do individually, but we really need to work together, which means everybody needs to be selling and doing their part for all of us to get to that goal that we wanna get to. Um, so just food for thought out there. I didn't even intend on talking about that, but sometimes it happens like that. Sometimes it does. <laughs> um, so I love when I kind of have these uncomfortable moments with myself in a sense where I'm able to learn um, or relearn certain lessons, um, just life lessons that help me to continue to grow as a woman, as a person. Um, and helps me to get myself in check. Like, I like when that mirror is held up before me um, and when I'm the one that's like, ooh, Chanel, like, you need to you, you need to work on that. That's not too cute, you know? Um, and so I always say I'm willing, a lot of what I talk about is not like me, like, and this is what you need to do because y'all don't do this. Like, it's I'm always a part of it. Like, I experience things like everybody else. Maybe I'm just one of the few who are willing to, to admit it and be transparent about it and talk about it. Um, but yes, that whole winning thing, I don't know how I feel about that. But we all will have our times and our turns where life and God is amazing to us, where we're getting those advances financially or we're um, doing well in the department of, of love and significant others and friends and family and just within ourselves. And then there are moments where it's time for us to sit down and not be the center of attention and not shine bright like a diamond. And it's time to give someone else that moment and that the floor, so to speak, you know? Um, 
Which brings me to another point. A lot of my colleagues are very much into astrology and, you know, the zodiac sign. And when people often hear that I'm a Leo, they're like, you're a Leo? Very few people are like, yeah, you're a Leo. <laughs> Most are like, you're a Leo? Because Leos are known for being attention whores, very attention seeking, bossy, it's all about me, and all of that jazz. And don't get me wrong, I definitely have qualities that mirror um, a Leo, but then in other ways I'm not like a Leo. I don't need to be the center of attention. I don't need to be like, hey, look at me, see me. <laughs> um, I am very caring, which Leos also are. I'm very loyal, Leos also are. Um, I'm okay with uh, building someone. I'm definitely here for building other people up and you know, speaking positivity and love and light into people. And um, I would like to think I'm a natural born leader and not like bossy. I'm not that friend or that loved one or that wife even that is going to tell you what you have to do. And if you don't do something, I start bugging out because I don't know how to not have control. Like that's not me, which is why I don't always buy into all of these like zodiac sign personality traits, so to speak. But, um, but yeah, you know, <laughs> um, so a lot of my colleagues are like heavily into that and in some ways, I still use it as a way to kind of get to know them and vice versa, them, me. Um, sometimes I may still say things where I'm like, oh, Chanel, why did you, like, oh, you know how you can say something that annoys you that you said it? <laughs> it's hard to explain. But um, sometimes I think I do have a tendency of, when I am expressing something, it may be like, where you may think I'm talking about myself, like in an arrogant way or in a, wish you were me way when that's not the intention. It's more like, yeah, a red flag for me in this situation was when this person was like being uber nice to me or giving me way too much praise and they don't even know me, haven't even assessed certain things about me. That was a red flag for me where someone else could take that as, oh, here she goes. So this person, this person's giving her praise. And you know, so as I'm saying it, I'm like, oh, I don't like that I said that. It annoyed me that I said that and hopefully the other person didn't take it on as that. Sometimes I'm uber hard on myself or in my head a lot with certain things or overanalyze things or myself. Um, but yeah, and maybe that's a Leo trait, you know, always bringing it. So maybe I do, I am a Leo, but just maybe in a more subdued way, not like a loud way. Um, but that's something else that I'm trying to like figure out <laughs> because I definitely don't want to um, give off vibes of like true narcissism or just things always being about me because that really is not who I am at the core. I'm the person that wants to hear all your problems and help you, you know what I'm saying? Um, and share two-way street, of course, but I, I want it to always be a two-way thing, not just me always talking about me. Like, no, <laughs> but anyway. Um, let me see, is there something else I wanted to talk about? Once again, checking my trusty iPad. I know I got about another eight minutes. Um, oh, I've been watching Being Mary Jane. Crazy enough, I've watched this whole series when it was airing on TV, and then as we know, it was canceled. And for some reason, a couple of, a week ago, I felt the urge to watch it. Nothing on TV was really um, attracting me. And so I put it on, you know, through Netflix and watched like the first two or first season binge watched it. Like I've never seen it before. Like this show is really great, right? I love how it's so true to what a lot of women go through and just different scenarios, right? Especially women of color. And then come to find out I think maybe a week later there was advertisement that they're going to do the finale movie, the final movie. So everything ends. We, we get to know what happens with Mary Jane. Does she get married? This, that, and the third. Her children on the horizon. And I was like, yo, my intuition was on with that. Like I didn't know why I had this urge to watch Being Mary Jane. So I was off from work today and I finished watching most of um, the four seasons. And, you know, watching this show just really, really reminded me the importance of us particularly people and specifically women 
really like learning to love ourselves. And I know I sound like a broken Victor Victor record with this, as I always say, but it's so important. The choices Mary Jane was making for her life, you know, um, with men and just how she was maneuvering with career and friendships and all these things, like she had to get to a place of really, really doing the work and loving herself enough to not mess with a guy that's married or to not find yourself in situations where you're just dealing with men who are just constantly take, 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 take. She's a wealthy woman. You know, for most of the series, she was in her latter 30s. You know, she's a high profile woman because of her career and just the constant everybody taking, 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 you know, um, and her having to feel the need to fix everything for her family, to fix everything like, a lot of that stems from when we don't give ourselves the time to t figure out what's going on with us and to be one with ourselves and damn why, why am i messing with this married man like i can't get no man out here that's single like why why is it that i'm feeling the need to share this man or put myself in a situation that nine or ten times is going to be a lose-lose situation right why when I could just prepare myself and wait patiently for the right person and then fast forward to season four she meets a great guy who I feel like was the best match for her and she would do everything in her power to sabotage it right ends up sleeping with Michael Ealy's character and now is caught up with him so I'm dying to see who she ends up marrying <laughs> with the, you know, the finale movie. But all these things were just a reminder to me in watching all four seasons these past week. Like, this is real life shit that a lot of people go through. And when we are not making the efforts to really figure out our behavioral patterns, especially when they're not in our best interest or they're not healthy patterns, like, we're gonna continue to make choices that are only gonna hurt us and the people around us. And so I love, as I often say, when TV shows, series, and uh, reality shows, and um, talk shows, and movies really discuss real life issues and have it plain before us to see. Because then sometimes maybe we can look at things with a different lens and say, you know what? Damn, that's me. I identify with this character or damn like you know what I'm saying um I love the writing for the show and just the the direction the the scenarios it's so real true life you know goes to show you could be a millionaire you can have you can be at the top of your game in your career like if we continue to not want to get to know who we are and love who we are and work through our shit then it doesn't matter all the money we have and the power we have. We will still be some messed up individuals making messed up choices that are only gonna make our lives harder in the end, which is another huge message um, that my brand is all about. Self-love, discovering who you are and learning to love who you are because through that, now we can treat people the way they should be treated. Now our hearts are open to receive love and to give it in a healthy way. Mary Jane, she often didn't treat people nicely. Like when she got mad, she would go for the jugular. She's like trying to hurt you. She's defensive. She's rude, disrespectful, nasty. Like how are you gonna be able to find the relationship you're longing for? Or how are you even gonna be able to be a mother and raise other people? when we're still dealing with these things like or at least raise children in a way to to treat others healthily to love themselves like so that's why i feel like self-love is super super important and it's a topic that i will forever be passionate about knowing our worth working through the things we need to work through i was very transparent about my competitive spirit at times needing to get that in check you know what i'm saying or just little tendencies where okay, Chanel, let's frame and phrase things in a way where it doesn't seem like you're always talking about yourself or your accomplishments or how you're killing it. You know what I'm saying? Like more so once again in the professional realm. Um, so yes, there are things that I need to continue to work on and figure out 
and um, do better with. It's something I think we all are continuously having to do. You know, and I love when there's shows like Insecure, like Being Mary Jane, like Sex in the City, like shows that depict women of all different kinds of backgrounds really digging deeper, hitting dead ends and seeing time and time again, this is not working. Why do I keep repeating the same patterns? How come my life is not developing and growing in these areas? Why am I at this standstill? I say that I want marriage, but year after year after year, how come it's not happening for me? I say I want career, but year after year after year, I'm still stuck in this area. I say that I want um, to, to, to love myself, to get over certain insecurities, but I feel so stuck in this zone. It happens to all of us, right? The best of us. But at some point, we have to be willing to say, you know what? I got to figure this out. Once again, as I often say, whether that means having to see a therapist to help you figure it out, having to go to God if you believe to help you figure that out within yourself, really maybe even putting things down on pen and with pencil and paper, pen and paper to like figure it out. To say, I'm tired of hitting this dead end. Something's got to change. Um, so I love when I see shows that really depict that and don't glorify the dysfunction or glorify the craziness, the ratchetness, <laughs> the foolishness, but shows that'll give us a true depiction at the same time, a remedy for how not to find ourselves in these situations or perhaps how to get ourselves out of them, if that makes sense. Um, so I'm so glad to know that being Mary Jane, the final movie is happening in April, I believe. Um, and so we're at the 46 minute mark. I'll stop here. Continue to rock out with your girl by going to complexedsimplicity.com. Thank you so much for all the love and support. I wish I knew who all of you are that constantly go to complexedsimplicity.com. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. And until next time.